go to David Threadgold. He's head of Asia Research at Keith Broyett and Woods. And a Bloomberg number one analyst on Japanese insurers. He joins us now from Tokyo. Uh, David, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Well, what do you make of the figures that I've just been reading out? Well, I think when you look at the, the scale of the, both the economic losses and the total insured losses, uh, the actual burden that is coming down on uh, particularly the P&C industry, uh, but also the life industry net of their reinsurance recoveries uh, is really quite modest. Um, for the P&C companies, anywhere between uh, sort of the high 50 billions up to just under 100 billion, 92 billion uh, at Tokyo Marine and Fire, and then in the, in the life space, uh, Daiichi Life um, looking at something like a 30 billion uh, yen uh, loss on the, the underwriting side. Uh, so you, you compare that, as you say, to total market losses, uh, which are generally being considered in the order of, you know, two and a half trillion dollars, sorry, two and a half trillion yen, 25 uh, billion dollars. Um, it's really quite small. Yeah, and why? I mean, it surprised me as well. Why do you think that's the case? Well, I think it um, splits out into a number of different layers. One of the biggest areas of loss will be within the, the agricultural cooperatives, the, the Kyosai. Uh, those um, separately uh, reinsure uh, with uh, international reinsurers, and that's going to be one source of the, the total market losses. Uh, the next layer is that there's a government-sponsored uh, domestic residential earthquake scheme, uh, and that... Uh, we'll see probably government uh, picking up around half uh, the insured losses and even when that does come into the direct companies uh, they will cover those payments out of liability reserves so they won't in fact impact uh, the reported numbers uh, even though the money has gone out the door. Uh, so I think it's a combination of, uh, of those two schemes as well as uh, some fairly heavy layers of reinsurance cover on the remaining commercial risks uh, that has protected uh, the primary companies uh, in Japan from the worst of the, the disaster. So do we then look to the reinsurers and see how they take it and whether they can take it on the chin? Well, most of the, the international reinsurers, Swiss Re, Munich Re, um, Lloyds, have, have come out with estimates uh, already as to their losses uh, on this. And they're, and they're certainly not small, uh, but well capable of, of being paid without any undue uh, pain on those, those businesses. Right, right, let's just focus in on these specific uh, insurers here in Japan. Well, they're in Japan, I should say there. Uh, now, let's talk about your ratings when it comes to the outperformers. You've got T&D Holdings, Tokyo Marine and NKSJ. Those are your favorites there. Why? Largely on, on a valuation perspective, if we look at um, NKSJ, it trades at under 50% uh, of our estimated NAV. Uh, Tokyo Marine Holdings, uh, only a little over 60%. Uh, T&D uh, at around 50% of uh, estimated current embedded value. We just feel that uh, those valuations are overly conservative, uh, given that we think that there are good underlying long-term growth prospects for those NAV. Not, I would, uh, I would say, growth prospects, particularly in the business, but that the, the NAVs and the embedded values do have uh, the prospect of growing, you know, 5 to 8% to per annum. David, very quickly also, I noticed that you didn't have any sell recommendations here. Well, we find that uh, these levels of valuations, it's, it's difficult to, to be too negative about any of the, the companies. Um, they're all trading at large discounts to either their NAV or their embedded values. David, thanks a lot for that. David Threadgold there joining us from Tokyo. Uh, he's from Kiefer Broyet and Woods.